In this video, I'm going to discuss measures of spread, also called measures of dispersion. And the measures mentioned in the book are the standard deviation, variance, quartiles and percentiles, and the range. The range is easy to compute. It's the maximum minus the minimum, but it's not terribly useful. So we're going to focus on standard deviation and variance and the quartiles. These are the formulas for the sample variance and the population variance. Before, when we talked about means, the formulas were exactly the same for population mean and sample mean, but this is no longer the case. You'll notice in the denominator for the sample variance, instead of dividing by the sample size, we're dividing by the sample size minus one. But for the population variance, we are dividing by the population size. Once we've computed the variance, it's easy to compute the standard deviation because it's the square root of the variance. Notice that the symbol for the sample standard deviation is our letter S, and the symbol for the population standard deviation is a Greek letter that is a lowercase Greek letter S, that's a lowercase sigma. These are the steps we need to compute a variance. But instead of me reading these to you, let's look at an example. Let's assume that these six numbers are a sample and we know already that the mean is nine. The first step is to list out all six numbers and I've done that in the first column labeled X. The next step is to subtract the mean from every number and I've done that in the column labeled x minus x bar. If we add the numbers at this point, we'll see that they all cancel each other out. The, they all add to zero. The idea of the variance and the standard deviation is to get an average of the distance from the mean, but if we try to average these numbers, it won't do us any good because they add to zero. The third step is to square the differences, and that's in the third column, labeled x minus x bar squared. The fourth step is to add the squared differences. So you can see I've added 16 plus 9 plus 4 plus 0 plus 9 plus 36 to get a sum of 74. That's the numerator of the fraction I need for my variance. Because this is a sample, I'm going to divide by the sample size minus 1. So I have 74 divided by 5, and my variance is 14.8. To get the standard deviation, I just take the square root of 14.8, so my sample standard deviation is 3.847. Let's talk next about quartiles. Quartiles divide the data into four equal parts, and this is our measure of spread that goes along with the median. And in fact, the second quartile is the same as the median. So think about cutting up a piece of cake or something into four pieces. What we might do is cut it in half and then take each of those halves and cut them in half again. And that's exactly what we're going to do with the quartiles. We'll have three numbers that divide the data into four parts. Let's look at an example. We've seen these numbers before and you may remember that the median is eight when we cut the data exactly in half. So then I cut that first half in half again. I find the first quartile is six, and I take the second half and cut it in half, and find the third quartile is 12. We also talk about something called the five number summary, which is the minimum, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and the maximum. So in this case, our five number summary is 5, 6, 8, 12, 15. This example is a little bit ridiculous that we're using five numbers to sum up the six numbers that we started with, but you get the idea. So let's go back to our example and add one more number and compute the variance again. We're starting to see this isn't really very much fun. Computing the quartiles is pretty easy. Computing the variance and standard deviation is not. The best way to compute the standard deviation is with a calculator function called 1var stats. 
and I'm not going to go over that in this video because there are several excellent videos on YouTube that explain this and I've included one on Blackboard for you. Let me just note that as you're looking at the output from one of our stats, this function will give you everything we've talked about so far. The mean, the median, standard deviation, and the quartiles. Actually, it doesn't give you the mode. But to find the mean, you want to look for x bar. You won't actually see the letter mu on the calculator. But you will see two standard deviations because, again, those calculations are different. They are not the same number. So the sample standard deviation is marked as S in the textbook, but it's marked as SX on the calculator. The population standard deviation is marked as a sigma, but it's marked as sigma X on the calculator. In summary, if we're going to use the mean as the measure of center, then we probably also want to use the standard deviation as the measure of spread. If we're going to use the median as the measure of center, then we would probably want to use the quartiles as the measure of spread. There is nothing analogous to the mode when it comes to measuring spread.